what we're going to talk about today is the level 10 meeting. You said that there's a lot of different parts of the EOS system that I think we could talk about in future episodes. But today we want to focus in on this level 10 meeting. And, and so you already said it. I mean, what I like about this is a level 10 meeting happens every week. We personally do it on Mondays in the morning, again, with the four of us on our leadership team. We're kind of rounding out our leadership team. So maybe someday we'll, we'll expand that number. There's not a, a magic number there. And if you um, do just work by yourself or you work with you and a spouse or a partner, I think you can still have these level 10 meetings, uh, even by yourself, right? You can basically just take this hour, hour and a half to reflect on what you need to get done. And we'll kind of break down the, the five or six parts of this level 10 meeting. But the other reason I really love the level 10 meeting is um, it's just a time for the four of us to get together. And we're all seeing different parts of the business. And we have an ongoing chat um, all the time, right? Every day we're chatting with each other. But when we get together, we really kind of lay it all out on the table and we see, we each see things differently. We each have different strengths and weaknesses. So when we go together, I think it really helps. One of, um, you know, a Bible verse I really love is Proverbs 15, 22. It says, without counsel, plans fail, but with many advisors, they succeed. And I feel like when the four of us get together in this level 10 meeting, we're seeing that we're seeing like different counsel advisors. And before this level 10 meeting, Andy, I mean, you you talk with a lot of other Amazon sellers, but it's kind of random, right? And you, you've always tried to get some form of counsel through mark, uh, networking and, and um, meetups and, and talking to other people. But um, I feel like since we started doing this um, a couple months ago, probably about six months ago, we, we started these level 10 meetings. We've had this counsel just among each other really ramp up. So any thoughts on that? And then I just want to break down these six parts of how we do this level 10 meeting, starting with just good news with each other. I'm trying to reflect on the past week, like a, a personal win and a work win in the past week. Yeah. So what we're about to bring to you is most people are like, oh man, another meeting, especially entrepreneurs. But these meetings, which for me in my life, it's never been uh, the case. I hate meetings. But these meetings now, I actually look forward to because I know that they're going to push our company forward. So let's get into what they are. Yeah. So uh, the level 10 meeting is supposed to be about 90 minutes. It could be 60, probably if it's just you, uh, an hour to reflect through these six parts. Number one is the good news. And it's supposed to be about five minutes. We struggle with keeping it to five minutes, Andy, but just walk us through. How do you feel like those first five minutes of, of good news go for you? Yeah. So, we, you know, we go around, we say, hey, you know, give us a personal win. Uh, and so whether, um, you know, you have a family or you're single, you just talk about what was cool personally. And uh, and then we say, hey, give us a professional win. Uh, so what in the last week in your department or on your team uh, have you seen or are you working on that's been pretty cool to talk about? So uh, and then we go around. I could be tempted to skip this if it was just me. Um, any, any reason what you can think of of why this is important just to start off the level 10 in this way? Yeah, I mean, I think it just kind of breaks the ice. It gets uh, folks, everybody has to share. So it gets folks talking. And honestly, um, you know, numerous studies have been put out like, you know, positivity breeds positivity. And so I think just starting out with the good news is a great way to get the meeting going. Yeah. So after those first five minutes of good news, we get into five minutes of our scorecard. That's where we're breaking down our key metrics when it relates to the marketing, the operations and the finance of the company. To be honest, we're still working on this. I feel like we're working out King Center scorecard, um, basically coming up with the eight to 15 most critical numbers in your entire business. Um, you know, so, so numbers like your revenue, numbers like um, your, your A cost, maybe on Amazon or your tacos. And ideally, things that are, are leading indicators, not just lag measures like revenue, but stuff that's going to impact down the road, weeks or months down the road, because you're doing that right. Andy, what do you think on the scorecard and your thoughts on, you know, just going through that as a team? Yeah, no, it's good. Again, what you're trying to do is identify those issues uh, as a team, uh, collaborate and see what those issues are. And so just the four of us, I think, being together on a weekly basis really brings some unity to what we are seeing as, you know, really the bottlenecks in our business that, you know, we may be experiencing that's preventing us from growth. 
in, in the thought process is, and I think they give the example in the book, if you had to be somewhere uh, on an island on vacation and once a week only get one update from your team and you couldn't talk to them at all and you could only see these eight to 15 numbers, would that help you still get a pulse on the business and be able to uh, understand what's going on? I think, again, we're still working on that ourselves, getting the right numbers there, but having a scorecard where we can see those most important numbers has been super helpful. 